We are now recording. Welcome to the Emo Social Club podcast, broadcasting to you live from EmoSocialClub.tv. I am Brian. And I'm Lizzie, and we are here this evening with Floridians, a brave weather, <laughs> finally joining us on the pod. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. How's it going? You said Floridian with like just a hint of <laughs> a hint. <laughs> She's like, oh, you guys are maybe psycho. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, <You> Florida. <laughs> so have you had a Florida man uh, news report today? If you have it, it might be you. <laughs> I forgot to check mine today. Oh, man. You know, it's like our daily horoscope. We don't check uh, CoStar. We check Florida man. <laughs> I feel like that's more telling about how you can predict your life, honestly. I think so. It works for me. <laughs> my my Florida man one that I've looked up was like some dude threw a crocodile or an alligator, sorry, through a drive through window. It's oh. like, that's good. <laughs> that's... <laughs> was that recent? That was uh, just a February one. I don't know. I think it was just like the day and it just like gives you like a bu- oh, like your Florida birthday man. and it just like gives you like a bunch of uh, ones so that happen you on your that. birthday. As your birthday Florida man. Oh, yeah. That's great. So it does kind of work like a like a horoscope. Yeah. So this is the yeah. energy you receive on your birthday. You're like, you are an Aquarius and also a general alligator tosser. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is yeah. the type of Florida man you would be. <laughs> exactly. You here extensively. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, let's have you both introduce yourselves so that we, we know who we're talking to out of Brave Weather tonight. Um, Hi, I'm, uh, oh, no, Maria, go ahead. Oh, he introduced me already. I'm Maria. Uh, I play guitar. That's it. Nothing else. Hi, I'm I'm Christian. Uh, I have the easy job. I just have to sing. So take care of the team. That is the easy yeah, job. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't help with load in or anything. So. Oh man. Called so out. I, I rebuke that one because I do help. I just don't help load out. I'm, I'm just kidding. Really kidding. I carry the mic and he carries my amp. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I have had many members of bands who are like, I have this giant like bass cab or whatever. And it's like, yeah, um, can you help me? And I was like, get a smaller bass cab. <laughs> like, just <laughs> why do you have so much shit? Why do we have to carry it all? <laughs> it's <just> not necessary. <laughs> I couldn't be a bass player or a drummer. That's a lot of shit to carry. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to do that. I can't even carry my tiny like amp setup that I have and like maybe two guitars. It's rough. Yeah. It's rough out here. Yeah. You yeah, also, you need, those, you need those. Yeah. Give Tony a shout out. Still. Yeah. yeah. I would, so, sorry. Yeah. So Tony oh, yeah. was, he was joining us. He was having technical difficulties, but he says, hi, um, mm-hmm. I give him a hard time every time we're loading in or out of a show though, because he'll, he'll ask for help. And I'll give it to it begrudgingly if he asks enough times. But like, why? If you didn't want to carry your stuff, why'd you become a drummer? You know? Why are you a drummer? You- That's like the best part is carrying your shit into the venue. Playing yeah. is like whatever. <laughs> he doesn't get the it. Physical labor really just does it, guys. Come on. Yeah. It's so yeah. rewarding. He's Jack, too. Like, he's in good shape. So I gotta <laughs> yeah. give him that. Do you feel it? Like, drummers. Je- I, I, I hesitate to compliment a person who's not in the call, you know? Like, I hesitate to do that for him because then he's gonna hear it later and be like, guys come on but at the same time like i think if you're drumming that's kind of just the the repercussions of drumming just is like yeah now he's got these like big arms and nothing to do with them you know <laughs> crazy calves yeah yeah you can't scratch your back you know it's just like oh, shit and muscles are too big <laughs> yeah no he's not there yet doesn't have that problem the yeah, drums aren't heavy enough True. If I had a dime for every time Tony made us scratch his back after a show. <laughs> Cute. Pretty gross. He's sweaty. I always hit nose goes on that one. Mm-hmm. No thanks. With only three of you, though, I'm sure it, the nose goes quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know who it always is. <laughs> yeah, Maria's gotten really quick with the hand. Yeah. Yep. Like ready. I just have a hand there. It just yeah, lives there. Yep. It just lives there forever. Get a yeah. tattoo. It's like a forever yeah. finger on there. It's a fucking hand tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, no, it's nose goes. It looks like you're picking your nose. Mm-mm. It's nose goes. No. Don't worry about nose it. Goes. Nose goes. Trust me. Ask me to do it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> uh, we should. We'll, we'll shout out your your EP that you just released too in October. Uh, we were just talking a little bit before this that. This is the this is the thing. It just came out and it's big. So uh, tell us a little bit more about it. What 
what what should we say about something which is, there's already been so much said <laughs> before we actually jumped on the on the recording so i guess that doesn't really count <laughs> Yeah, you just started recording as soon as we got in. We figuring it's out my bad. Yeah. Brian's slipping. <laughs> All good. Yeah. All right, repeat yourself, Christian. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the EP, uh, we just released that back in October. And what was kind of cool about the release specifically for the EP is we got to release that almost two years to the day from when we released our very first song. Which is really special to us because we're sentimental people and we hold on to that stuff. But um, yeah, the last two years between COVID and just like get, being a band and building our friendships and, and writing together, it's been a, a pretty crazy ride for only two years. It feels like it's been a lot longer. I'm sure that's a sentiment that a lot of like bands probably have, but time, the time goes by very quickly and it simultaneously feels like you've been in the band together forever. But that's how the last two years have been for us releasing music and then the full year of COVID and everything before that. Um, and the EP is just a really cool sort of culmination of all of our like creative energies and everything that we've put into this band started coming into fruition and one finally like one body of music that's not just single after single after single. Yeah. Yeah, we had um, how many songs did we add to the EP? that we already had out. So we already had like maybe at least two or three songs on that EP mm -hmm. that were out as singles. And then we kind of just like combined them with um, some new stuff. One of them was a song that we actually had like a friend. Um, she featured on it and uh, her name is San Roman. Uh, so that was a song called Rose Colored. She featured on that. So that was kind of like a bonus track. We just threw that in there. Um, but that, song without the feature was already out um and then i think there was probably two other songs already out yeah we had a couple out already we had everybody knows out we had sleepless out and then yeah. rose colored but rose colored actually what's funny about that for anybody who knows i don't know if you guys have heard it i don't know which music video you guys have seen but that's the one where we're out in the snow playing edward 40 hands in like Colorado, which we as Floridians were not suited for at all. So <laughs> but, um, but so that song, the one where I'm singing the second verse, was actually not the, that was not plan A to release that. So the, uh, our friend Alexa San Roman, and shout out Alexa, uh, she did a feature for us way back. And we were just, at the time when we were pushing the songs out, we just like didn't quite have the song with her verse on it at the point where, we, where it was ready to release. But we did have a version of it where I did like a just in case verse, and that's the one we initially put out. But the plan originally was to put uh, Alexa out on the first rendition of that song back in man June of 2021 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'd say also with that music video, that was uh, I don't know if that was like very planned. I think a lot of it kind of just was like, hey, let's do this and then we kind of just did it i was in colorado shooting a, v a music video for another client and then um i was like hey uh two of us in the band are already out here do you guys want to like fly out here and like film the rest of this music video and they were like yeah why not and uh <laughs> so we ended up like not preparing to be in such cold weather because uh, i lived there for a little bit and i was like oh yeah like I always just walk around with just like maybe a hoodie, some jeans. I'm cool. But we went out into the mountains and I think it was like negative 30 something. Oh my God. And we had walked like a mile up this mountain and it, it was snowing, like physically snowing. And uh, that was probably the worst time of our life. <laughs> that was yeah. like so well terrible. One thing you definitely don't prepare for as a Floridian is how elevation changes temperature because mm -hmm. we don't have either of those things here. Yeah, that was tough. You have but. sun in the winter. That must be nice. It's cool. Yeah, I think we got down to, what, 45 degrees at our lowest this winter so far? And uh, yeah. that was pretty oh, yeah. chilly. No, I think it was like 30 on Christmas. On Christmas. There yeah, that's the like coldest Christmas we've ever Christmas had. Christmas vibe. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it was almost yeah. snowing, kind of. There's a little bit of frost on the windows. <laughs> now we hear, did the did the lizards freeze and fall out of their trees? Oh, yeah. This still yeah. freaks me out to my core since I found out about this. <laughs> that's a, so, yeah, that's a, that's yeah. a Miami thing. 
so we have these lizards that live right outside of our house and my wife names all of them. She goes, uh, Chillip, Dillip, Philip, Chinchillip. <laughs> and one of them fucking froze just on the wall as we were walking into our place. And, and I was like, oh, fucking Philip died. She's like, oh, Philip. <laughs> and he, he just stayed there on the wall, like fucking frozen for a week. And I think somebody finally came and got him. Okay. Rip. Yeah, Wild. That happens. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Philip. He never said a chance. I know. This might sound kind of cruel, but I'm just happy it wasn't Chinchilla. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Or Chillip. Oh, Chillip was my dude. Okay. He's around somewhere. I know it. <laughs> so have you ever... Okay, so you have the favorite lizards, but do you ever try to, like, get them together and, like, race to prove <laughs> who's the superior lizard? I think that is determined by how big they are. I think they, like... In my mind, they determine that by their size. So, like, and I think that also determined how they got their names. I think it just kind of, like, an illip kind of added on every time they got smaller. Okay. Chillip, chinchillip, fin dillip, I don't know. <laughs> Tickle dillip. Tickle dillip. That's probably a new one. That's the next one to replace Philip. I think that'll be a new one, yeah. Yeah. Instead <laughs> of Philip number two. Yeah, no, I can't can't give away names that have been. We will uh, we'll make new ones. Long live Philip. <laughs> we have this long list on my phone of like working titles for songs that we don't have titles for yet, um, yeah. and I think I have to add Chinchilla mm -hmm. as a working title. Chinchilla, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it could just it like be that. about the lizards. It could be about absolutely nothing related to them. It could be actually I... about something that like. It's like heartbreak or something, and I'd be like, I "Yeah, this is what it's yeah. about." Yeah, I love I love songs like that where like the title is like, "My lizard doesn't have a last name, but it's about seasonal depression." Yeah, or something. yeah, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like that meme that's been going around. It's just like, "Oh, you want to do this? This is another like silly like whole sentence." So basically, a Fall Out Boy or a Hot Mulligan a song mm -hmm. title. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chinchilla has made the list. Amazing. Now, yeah, when anyone sees very it, very interesting ones. <laughs> I feel like the working titles are always a lot better than like what actually goes on the record. We actually kept one. It was the first. No, was it the first song we put out? The very first one. Yeah, it was called White Claw, and uh, you know you could probably guess what we were doing. <laughs> drinking high life. And, yeah, drinking <laughs> a four loco. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, uh, we just liked the way it looked, though, I think. And we were like, I don't want to change it. So, you know, just stuck. Yeah. And you bring in, like, the marketing, you know? Now all of a sudden, like, hey, White Claw's like, this is going to work. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're, when you're, like, a completely, like, unknown, you've never even put out a song band, you do, you do have to have a little bit of that, like, marketing mind at first when you put out the song. Like, well, what's going to grab people's attention? And it was already the working title. So, you know, we were like, screw it. And yeah. we put it out into the world, and it kind of worked. But, um, yeah, it's still one of my favorite songs. I love White Claw. It's good song. White Claw never reached out. No, no not you know what? Once. Maybe Missed opportunity on their end, honestly. I know yeah. it. I know it. I think we plugged them, too, in the next video that mm -hmm. we put out after that. Can't it's believe like, their, market, yeah. their marketing is fumbling the bag this bad. I know. <laughs> yeah. They are a local Chicago company, though, so. Hmm. Well, Maybe we got to be from up there. Yeah. I don't think Maybe. that's, I think they just need to be a little bit more, you know, looking for that, that, that opportunity. more, like, influencer-minded. <laughs> yeah. At least when I DM'd uh, PBR, they responded. But I didn't oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. VR's got their nose to the ground on the, you know, the up and coming artists. I don't think White Claw is paying attention to up and coming bands. Yeah. I know our friend uh, RB, who's in Safe Face, was uh, doing their playlists and some of their graphics for a little bit last year. So they were actually curating some of these like playlists. And I'm like, oh, my God, like this music slaps like someone really knows. I'm like, oh, that's why. Oh, it's our friend. <laughs> it's like, oh, I get it. It's them. Yes. <laughs> Eventually, the emo community of the United States will be like 17 people that just do everything. And they're working for like PBR and White Claw and just like, oh, I really like this band. It's like, oh, shit, we're on this playlist. Oh, yeah. thanks. Thanks, Jim, for putting us on that playlist. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
You're be like, damn, I thought like this 40 year old exec who like never leaves his office because he hates his wife was really into some like really sad twinkle emo music. Upsetting. Damn. <laughs> damn, Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> Like man, can't believe this this guy's having such a life in your in your metaphor here. <laughs> what a life. <laughs> yeah. It's just a scenario. If you feel personally attacked, that sounds <laughs> well, <laughs> sounds, I gotta, sounds a lot like my life. <laughs> I, I gotta, what are you talking I, about? <laughs> first question one for Lizzie. Uh I feel like we all got the memo on the uniform. I was I was noticing it too. We all yeah. wore chains. I don't know what it is. Oh. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. The mic. There we go. But question there number is. two, uh, what is, is Twinkle Emo an official, like, subgenre of emo? And what bands fall into Twinkle Emo? Because I haven't heard of it. Yeah, it's like, um, it's what people, like, kind of joke around about is what, like, the original emo sounds like. Because you hear, like, the twinkly of the guitar. So, like, um. Like the I Midwestern emo sound? It's, like, classified Ooh. as Twinkle Emo. Um. Also, also not so much recently, but they kind of were thrown in there. So, like, kind of the fourth wave of emo when that came out, people were saying like, "This is twinkle emo." So it's like you hear like duh, 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 duh. <laughs> exactly like that on the guitar. One more time. <laughs> One more time. We're writing. We're writing down ideas. One more Absolutely time. Not. Yeah. Yeah. Careful. That was that was this close to the AT and T ringtone. Yep. Say oh man. Hey. <laughs> Say it again. Get. <laughs> It's like yeah, you take that right sample downtown. and you use that yeah. as your twinkle guitar <laughs> part, actually, in your next song. Listen, <laughs> the band, I fight the band so much on, like, how often I want to use, like, dumb voice recording stuff mm-hmm. in our songs. So, oh I God. mean, watch out. That might be an idea now. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the yeah. voice recording memo, that's, like, the key to any, like, prime and true, like, indie new wave emo song. So, like, yeah. you could be, like, Mob mm-hmm. James, guys. Yeah. We could. We could do it. Um, Everything Lizzie have, said, I don't understand, by the way. I have no idea what she just said <laughs> yeah. about any of it. <laughs> Twinkle, nothing, doesn't click. I send Twinkle him emo, bands and only knows. sometimes they land. Nah, yeah. <laughs> and like none of the none of the bands you mentioned, I'm like, oh, like I've seen Oso Oso and I'm like, OK, moving on. <laughs> and it's just like it's just like, I don't know, it just doesn't hit me in the same way. But if you say like Midwestern emo, I'm like, OK, I get like the. The jangly guitars and the sort of like weird, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. American I can understand that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess it's. That was one of my favorite TikTok trends for a little bit was the, uh, have you guys seen that? Where it's like, you just, it's like the modern version of Rick Rolling mm-hmm. where someone will start playing a video. You think it's one thing and then they start playing. I can't remember what that song is by American football. Or boom, Never boom, meant. Boom, 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 boom. Never meant. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, shame, shame on me. But uh, they start playing that, and they're like, you got American football. Like, <laughs> I saw was one of those, and then I never yeah. saw it again. I was like, what? I just, yeah, TikTok has me cornered. They, they know their audience. It was eating it up. I put on a, uh, a YouTube video last night. Well, I should say it, it came to me after watching a YouTube video that it was like, here you go. You want to watch this because it was like the history of emo by this one YouTube channel I have watched before. And my algorithm was like, you're going to like this video. And I was like, how do you know? Like, maybe I won't like the history of emo. Oh, but then it just started. It. <laughs> I it was it was fine. Uh, <laughs> it was fine. It was an hour long. And I'm like, I guess I'm digging in like whatever. Let's just let's just let it play. But they brought up like American football, which is uh, they're from they're, they're from Chicago, but they made uh, the band in Champaign or Ur- Urbana at U-, U of I, whatever. I don't know. I didn't go there's, to college there's like there. two colleges down there that sound the exact same. Yeah. Also, Champaign, Urbana. Like, come on, Urbana. pick a name. <laughs> Urbana. It- <laughs> Are we trying to make it sound fancy now? Yeah. It's a it's it's a it's champagne. A, it's a champagne. <laughs> it's only Urbana if it's made in the style. Champaign, Urbana region of, of <laughs> Illinois. Uh so they, they like went into it and they were talking about like American football and like their their like uh I don't know. They're, I was about to say reign of terror on American emo oh, <laughs> music and then I'm like, that's, that's not quite it. Messy. But they uh just like their popularity and they were like, actually they weren't super popular. They only released one record, but then they became a meme with Nevermint 
And they like went into like the history of the meme too. And I'm like, okay, now this video has got me. Cause you know exactly what this is. <laughs> so I, I don't blame you for not knowing never meant because apparently most people didn't know it back in the day. So it's fine. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I will say I didn't know much about American football probably till I got into like middle college either. Cause I was just like, I don't know what this is. I know punk music. I knew punk music a lot up to that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, never meant, never meant also like, I dream one day of a Brie Weather song just becoming an inside joke for all of TikTok. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, because that, that's what it is. Like, Never Meant's a fantastic song on its own. Obviously, everybody loves it. But the fact that it's just become an inside joke in that community and you either get it or you don't is like, I mean, you're never, that's one way to get big, right? Absolutely. One way to go viral. Yeah, become the bit. The forever become bit. The bit. Yeah, because then apparently they got, they, they re-released uh the record in like 2014 and it broke the website <laughs> so it was like yeah that that that's how you do it like you oh. just wait a while and then eventually it becomes a meme and then you're like it's on sale guys all right cool we finally made we finally sold all the records we never sold in like 1997 you know whatever <laughs> 97 god a lot of 90s in there it's like damn all these bands started in like the 90s and now you see them playing and you're like, wait, started in the 90s? Like, yeah. I only heard of you in like 2006. What the hell was going on? <laughs> Sometimes it just takes that long for like some people to hear you, anyone to hear you. You just keep going. I mean, like they were from the 90s, but you also have a lot of like night, like late 90s inspo too, in some of your music. If you can like kind of elaborate on that, how you kind of like layer that in and Brian's giving me the death clip for this transition. Lizzie. Okay. For background, Lizzie works in radio. Lizzie <laughs> listens to transitions from one thing to another all the time. And then she comes in here and she starts bringing these transitions in. And I, every time I'm like, I hear it. I'm like, I, I hear it coming. I hear her doing it. And it just, it, it, he it looks turns it. Like it fucking sees it in her head. Yeah. Yeah. I see the gears turning. I'm like, I can, I can see, you know, like, uh, if you've ever had like a, like a, like a video game controller that was like clear so you could see all the inner workings of it. It's like that, but it's her brain. And I just see all the little like controller bits moving and I see all the little pieces and things are lighting up and I'm like, it's coming up with a transition right now. And I am upset. <laughs> I literally was I was listening to a New York Times podcast the other day at work and I'm like maybe a min I'm literally a minute in and this dude does the smoothest fucking transition and I'm like oh my god I love it and I immediately send it to Brian I'm like listen from the beginning to like a minute and two seconds and he's like I am upset yep. physically. <laughs> like it's a little too smooth yeah like riff ideas take them you know Lizzie transition ideas I'm taking them <laughs> absolutely yeah I feel like, yeah, I just watched that happen in real time and I sort of realized it was happening. And I was like, oh, man, yeah. right, now we're talking about this. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, is that I interrupt it every time and then we never actually talk about the subject <laughs> she was trying to transition to. So, Lizzie, retransition us into. Oh, uh, uh, no. this. Yeah. <laughs> so as we talk about bands that were like in the 90s, you're inspired by a lot of late 90s and early 2000s bands, especially like indie rock, obviously punk and emo adjacently as well. So can you kind of talk about how that has been layered into the development of your songs and like you guys as a band overall? Yeah, um, I mean, from from like the beginning of my listening as a kid, I, I was raised to love the killers. And so I like I'm such a huge Killers guy. Um, Hot Fuss ha is like a top two album for me. My two, Absolutely. My two top albums. Um, and forgive me because I know the latter one. I guess there there are some some issues happening now. But let's look just look at the past. Uh, a fever. I can't sweat out. Yes. Panic. And Hot Fuss by the Killers are just. The, uh, they those have my heart right yes. and so that's that's my between that and then a lot of foo fighters for like the 2000 or for the early or late 90s those are that's where a lot of at least the influence that that i that i that i get is, is that's my late 90s early 2000s is a lot of killers a lot of panic of the disco um 
I know I know Maria and I share a lot of those influences. So Maria, if you want to, yeah, I I definitely listened to a lot of the Hot Fuss album. My mom had the CD. Like it wasn't me; it was my mom. She had the CD just like in the car, and that was like all we had. So at one point, that's the only thing I listened to. Which I don't know if that's like a huge inspo on my guitar playing, but uh, I listened to a lot of AFI. Um, that was like my oh, yeah. main band that you know got me into playing guitar and uh stuff like that and um I'm kind of I don't know I listen to a lot of like female fronted bands because I also like took up singing and stuff um so it's kind of weird lots of like I guess if we want to go back to like early 2000s 90s it would be like Avril Lavigne oh yeah um um definitely liked a lot of Paramore can't can't knock that and um Dang, there was another band that. Oh, I, I like smaller bands too. Around the time of, I don't know if you guys know who Kill Hannah is. Oh, uh, they're from Chicago. I know who they and, are yeah. very well. Yeah, we, <laughs> we DJed with. Uh, the yeah, their bassist <laughs> just became like a friend of ours randomly, <laughs> and oh, cool. it's just like one of those things where it's just like if you're in Chicago long enough, you'll know somebody from Kill Hannah. So yeah, yes, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I actually ran into the guitar player the other day uh, in Mexico, but I never said hi because I was like, ah, it'd be weird. <laughs> but, I think it's okay. But, yeah. It's not like you're, yeah. I feel like, okay, like this isn't a diss or anything, but this is like reality. Not to diss. It's not like you ran into <laughs> Harry Styles who was trying to be undercover. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, it's Harry Styles. It's like, hey, dude, you're from Kill Hannah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, super. Well, he plays in like Filter now, I mm-hmm. think. That's and true. So, uh, yeah, we were doing the same festival but yeah super cool um kill hannah was and then i listened to a lot of like him and stuff so very diverse um influences so i can't really like give any one person credit but (laughs) yeah very eclectic we both named like all my favorite bands so that worked out Now well, we could sit, sit here for the rest of the hour and just like and this band, yeah, and this band, and this yeah, band. <laughs> just yes or no yeah, on all these band. bands. Yeah. <laughs> Speed challenge. It's more like, like I don't know the inspiration side of things, especially when you're in like a newer band now, or if you're like of a certain age, and it's like okay, of course, all these bands that like started emo, but. If, watching this video yesterday, it's like, of course, all these bands starting bands at that time, listen to the bands that came right before. So the video says like, oh, if you know Lifetime or the movie life or these bands, like then all of a sudden every band listened to them and started their own band. And that's why we have Taking Back Sunday and Dashboard Confessional. This, these are just the the natural transitions. So it's like I do think that it is an interesting thing to say, like where your influences are from, even though they might all be similar among many bands. Uh, but at the same time, like it also makes me as a fan go, Oh, no wonder I like your band. We listen to the same shit. And then you wrote music. And now I like your music that you're writing because you were a fan of the bands that I'm also a fan of. So it just gives you a good, like, okay. And even if it isn't like, you're not writing like AFI riffs, but as like a huge AFI fan, now I know going into listening to your music, like, yeah, there's, there's some AFI, like back in the, you know, back of your mind while you're writing that guitar riff. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Maria, Maria and Tony revived my love of AFI. I liked AFI a lot back in the day, but they they were like, "Hey, yeah, AFI, we have to cover this song, we have to do this." And so I started like really diving back into it. And then even like vocally live, you'll hear me go, "Oh, I'll do like a little like." A yep. Out, like <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> But that shit is awesome. <laughs> like, it's, it's it's just yeah, it sounds great, and it's like, and nobody can do it like him. But like, it sounds like fantastic. Yeah, and I'm I'm like, I can't not do it. It's right there. You know? so do you have do you have a little out. hidden O in any of the music <laughs> in your on your EP? Just have you done like it on a, recording? Yeah. Sprinkle. Um, nobody can. We're, I'm, we're going to be going in and putting vocals down. Nice transition, by the way. We're going to be going in and putting vocals down <laughs> on a song uh, we're working on here probably in the next uh, couple weeks. And I might just sneak one in there for you guys. There we go. Yeah. It's one of those things that like, because the way AFI did it, it's like now I go to shows and like <laughs> I'll, I'll do the ah, with him. Like when he like sings <laughs> yeah. the song and it's like, it's just going to become that thing where like now all of a sudden the crowd is like, ah, and you're like, I did it. 
<laughs> you're gonna like yeah. sit like if you have a music video for it you'll just have to like condense it down to that little part that it's in the music video be like mm -hmm. guys do you recognize this homage to <laughs> this really little emo band? Oh and then they're goodness. gonna then they're, you're gonna have half the people going like oh that's cool and then the other half be like i can't believe you ripped off afi in the meantime yeah. you do not sound too much like afi no. that closely <laughs> either and you're gonna be like uh -uh. yeah nope yeah, we. I, I mean, don't know. We, I, no, no, no. I don't know if people on. would be like, "Yeah, you listen to AFI." I can I can hear that? I mean, I don't. I don't think that because I feel like AFI is like on a completely different like spectrum. But I don't know. You guys would would know better than we would. I'm gonna re-listen now. Now that I know this information, right? Because I feel like if you're into AFI, it's a very specific sound that you bring to it. But if I know that you like AFI and if you're like AFI was the reason I got into guitar, then I'm going to go listen to it and go, OK, is there AFI in here? And now I'll listen to it with a more discerning, critical ear and uh, I will report back. So Brian, the music <laughs> critic. Excellent. I'm a bad critic because I like everything like and I think like as I've gotten older, I'm just like, I'm not going to dislike anything like I don't have to love everything, but I like liking things. And I like the idea of listening to a new band and going like, oh, this is really cool. And then like the more you learn about them, the more you're like, awesome. Let me like listen to it like that now. And I don't know. That's more fun than like. It, yeah. it took me so long to get there mentally. It really did. There was so long of my life where like my friends and people who were really enthusiastic about music around me couldn't stand me because I was, and I'll admit it up front, I was such an elitist about mm -hmm. my music taste. And I thought I just like, I was like, I could listen to something I'm like, wow, this is fantastic for the reasons that I like music. And I'd go listen to something else, country or something. And I'd be like, how can you listen to this? This is so stupid because it doesn't match my criteria for like what makes good music. And then it took a couple of my friends to like hit me in the head enough times to be like, dude, can you just appreciate it for what they're trying to do? Because you don't know what they're trying to do. And now I kind of I try and take that same approach when I listen. And, and it has made my listening and music enjoyment experience so much better to just be like, there's a reason to like this and I'm going to find it. And and I end up liking so much more stuff because of that. Mm -hmm. Feel good thing of the day. I think what's <laughs> helpful is like nowadays people are so much more open about like just genre and like actually like truly like not giving a shit what they listen to anymore because it was the same thing when i was younger i'd be like oh no like i'm gonna leave this blah 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 and i had to hide that i am like an undying stand for the jonas brothers and because people would be like you're not really emo then and i'm like what are you talking about please listen to their self-titled album this is literally a <laughs> pop punk album and i will fight yeah. anyone tooth and nail for it <laughs> <laughs> it's true i did That's dabble nice. in the joe bros Mm -hmm. for sure yeah, like it's good stuff yeah it's fun like i think my thing was like i'm gonna listen to i, I was like i'm not gonna listen to hip-hop because i don't think it's like there's no guitar in it right there's no like singing in it and that was like where i was at. i was just like no i want like bands and i want like musicians and these aren't real musicians and then like as i started getting more into it, i'm like oh actually like it's just different it doesn't have to be better or worse it's just different and then I was like, oh, shit, this is why everybody plays it at parties, because it's really fun and you can dance to it and everybody's having a good time. And I really don't want to be the guy like, hold on, party. Have we thought about having a better time? And then you put on like <laughs> fucking Avenged Sevenfold and everyone's oh, like, yeah, you're not in the party anymore, man. We're not inviting no, you to the next one. <laughs> you're going home, dude. <laughs> you put on Avenged Sevenfold and it's either Beast and the Harlot or Dear God. And then you really just kill the mood either way. It just, it just yeah. depends how. Like, but listen to the way they can play guitar. It's like, we don't care. We were having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're not here for that. Yeah. yeah and it, it's like, okay, I could just enjoy it and just go along with like, it doesn't, it doesn't take anything out of you to just be like into fun things that people are having fun doing. It takes nothing out of you. Yeah. I used to, I used to like be like, oh, pop music uh you know everybody likes it i don't want to listen to it and then i was like oh yeah pop music is so easy like i don't want to play anybody that can I don't, do it. yeah anybody could do it but if you actually sit down and try to make a pop song it's really fucking hard and um you know you have to have a lot of respect for that stuff but like just like on the outside a lot of times it's easy to just go that route yeah yeah over time 
Yeah. Nowadays, yeah, too, that. like, you can have a lot of documentation, like, online, especially on TikTok and YouTube, where you could be like, oh, I made this song, and you can go down, like, let me show you the ways in which I made this song and troubleshot it, and then, like, figured out how to use, like, Logic or Pro Tools or something, and then, like, go through the entire process. It's like, no, not everyone can just do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it takes a special ear to like. Yeah, anybody can string four chords together, right? Because there's a lot of four chord pop songs. But like, how many people can take that and turn it into something that is stuck in your head for weeks? Because I'm telling you, there's so much Carly Rae Jepsen, bro. Like, Queen. it's still in my head. I wake, I wake up and I hear, hey, I just you. like, yeah, ev every day. Your melodies just gotta click, and sometimes that's just really hard to come up with. I yeah. know that just doesn't come to people sometimes. I mean, maybe it does, but I'm sure it's rare. On the on the complete opposite spectrum of, you know, I know we're talking about how, like, pop music, right? Like, the, the, the thought there is, like, oh, it's easy, anybody can do it. There was a long time before I, I like, I feel like there's two kinds of, like, emo kids or two kinds of scene kids. And there was, there was the kids who listened to Fall Out Boy were one camp. And then there was the kids who listened to... Born of Osiris, mm -hmm. or like edging it, or Under Oath, Under Oath. So Born of Osiris, Under Oath, not the same camp, but you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, yeah. right? Like Under Oath, Fallout Boy, right? And I was definitely a Fallout Boy, and I would always look at like Under Oath and Hawthorne Heights, and they're just they're screaming their heads off. I'm like, well, I'm anybody can yell. So this is 10, 15 years later after I had that thought, and I'm still trying to figure out how to like fry scream. And I'm not <laughs> saying I want to work that into our music too much. I love it, and you know if the band gives me the green light, I'll scream a ton. But I still can't figure out how to do it. And so I actually have like I booked lessons with this guy on TikTok who I found. Uh, the guy rocks. Uh, his name is Sung by Derek. Like little yeah. plug there for him. Uh, but he's so good at breaking down how to do that stuff. And forever I thought it was the easiest thing. Now, like, next week, I have to set up, like, a lesson on our DM. I was like, hey, dude, can we just get on FaceTime? You can tell me what I'm doing wrong, because I've been trying to crack the code on Fry Screaming for a year now, and I can't. <laughs> just just to have it for the toolbox. Yeah. That's really yeah, cool. I, I, one of my friends, he was like, oh, yeah, I want to change. I don't even think he ever wants to be in a band. I just think he just wants to know how to do it. And he was trying to document it and, like, Instagram stories. Like, this is me, like, week two or something like that, <laughs> like, learning how to, like, scream, like, scream sing. And I'm like... Okay, and he's like, I'm just watching YouTube videos and hoping for the best. And I'm like, that's how you blow out your, your voice, bestie. Yeah. I'm like, I get it, but please be careful. <laughs> if that's all you got, I mean, sometimes that's all you got. That was, that was my thought, because I had the same sort of take on, like, metal bands mostly that would do that. I'm like, but there's no, like, you can be a metal band and sing. There are plenty of them that did, but then you just have, like, I think I was really mad. I was really mad at as I lay dying and I didn't know why. And then it turns out I knew exactly why. Um, but I was just really mad at like, this isn't like good. This is just like a bunch of riffing on guitar and then some dude with no melody and, no, and there's no screaming. And then I got super into bring me the horizon and I'm like, I get it. Okay. I'm there. Yeah, whatever. We're good. Uh, and then of course he's like, no, we're going to start singing. And all these bands like moved into like, we're going to actually start bringing in melody and learning how to sing. And I was like, okay, that's good because you need variety, but also like there is like and money and money and you know, we're blowing up and the only way to get bigger is to, you know, not just scream the whole time. Uh, but yeah, I was just like, you know, it, it takes no talent to learn how to scream. Now everybody's screaming and singing and I'm like, okay, it takes talent to do that. So you're all good in my book. And as I lay dying, you know, I was right. So, you know, Stand by that one. There was always something <laughs> off, and then it finally happened, and you're like, fuck. I Talk that like, one up, you know? Kid me. Definitely knew. It was that gut feeling, <laughs> that in, that little little intention there. <laughs> <laughs> so when you guys were beginning to work together and write together, you guys were basically using a casket warehouse? <laughs> to practice yeah. in mm -hmm. now here's the thing did you ever break into the caskets <laughs> and take a cozy nap just to <laughs> see what it feels like i wanted to they told me no they that's kind of rude to them honestly mm -hmm. it's they like said, the first thing they told up. us <laughs> yeah they said we know what you guys are here for don't even try and we're like no 
That's you want not try. why we're here. We're <laughs> like not going to try. <clears throat> but uh, I, I was wondering, I was like, are they used? I was really confused at first. And I was like, are they, have they, are they like, I don't know. I didn't know anything Are they repurposed? <laughs> <laughs> are they like... <laughs> Eco-friendly. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I was like, um, it's kind of weird, like, because I was like, oh, maybe it's, like, haunted. And then and then Christian's like, dude, they are they don't fucking do that. And I was like, okay, good. Just just making sure. You never know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, listen, and, uh, if Costco sells caskets, I mean, I really wouldn't also put it, like, aside for some people to be like, well, we cremated them. What are we going to do yeah. with this, like, 5000 it. casket? <laughs> like, sell it on, like, fucking Craigslist or something? Like... Yeah, what do you do with it? I mean, there's or also like, a fun fact. Not that great of a fun fact. Disturbing fact. But there are some <laughs> cemeteries that when you sign a contract to buy a plot, there's a time restriction on it. So you're not buried there forever. It oh. can be up to 99 or 100 years. And then they they sell it to someone else. They like, dig your ass up and give it to someone oh. else. Oh. <laughs> Where do you go? What? I don't Jeez. I don't know. You hope that someone is still alive in your family and be like, well, I'll... Fuck. Yeah, do something with this this skeletal <laughs> remain. Yeah. Paying rent on it? It's like you bring it back to your house. Yeah, so you know. So this is our new Halloween decoration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well here's our grandma. grandma. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, rent went up a lot in twenty twenty two. We couldn't afford to hold on to the plot. Got a new roommate. So yeah. Okay, uh, write down cemetery landlords as a possibility for your song titles because that yes. actually is pretty good. Oh, yes. Cemetery landlords, that's a pretty good one. You know what, what I'm also about to do? I'm gonna go on Craigslist thing to see if anybody's selling a casket. You should. Uh, I mean, also, probably are. <laughs> are the, I feel like the the results will vary from Illinois to Florida, though. So I feel like you're gonna have a better result search is, for what we're looking for. Florida. Yeah, yeah. We should build our next practice space out of repurposed caskets. Yeah, mm. bring it back. My Craigslist automatically starts searching Delaware for some reason. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's right. trying I mean. to tell you. That's where, the good That's where the good casket is. the are. literal smallest <laughs> yeah. state that nobody remembers about that exists. Somebody's Delaware. selling somebody selling a cemetery plot right now. How much is Craigslist. it going? You can twenty five hundred bucks. <laughs> oh, this is 20. a decoration. Okay. Oh, no. uh, good. Okay, no, no, it. sorry. I, I did. I did find a used casket, but it's just like a Halloween decoration. Gotcha. Somebody is actually selling their cemetery plot, and it's forty one miles away. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Burial crypts. Guess. Okay, hold on. Take a guess. You, no cheating. You can't go look it up. How much do you think burial crypts are going for in Jacksonville, crypts? Florida, right now? Ooh. A what burial is that? crypt. Like a crypt, crypt is like one of the, it's like a mausoleum. Yeah. yeah. Those so are expensive. Like, that that has to be you, at least like 115k. No, it's just for one one spot. Oh, one little uh, spot. I'd say like 40k. I'd say 80k. Man, you guys got that Chicago money. It's only uh only twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean. Well, one, one, two. We have a lot of mausoleums up here. You guys want to save some money? Come, come get buried in Florida. Get buried in Florida. Like my idea is. That's, that's one of the other ways that they get the, the retirees. They're like, you want to mm-hmm. save money? Come just get buried down here, guys. <laughs> just yeah, feed it to a gator. Gator's my casket. And then we'll throw that gator yeah. out the window. That, that is like at the one fast of the food rec- restaurant, circle heard. of life, baby. Yeah, circle of life. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> I imagine it's because it's the same thing that like happens in New Orleans, is, and I don't. It, it's like you ever start saying a sentence and you're like, "Why do you know this, man?" Like maybe maybe don't have this conversation with people on the internet. But then I'm like, I'm gonna do it. Uh, in New Orleans, because it's you know a swamp and it's Louisiana and it's like right on the yeah. coast, they have to bury you above ground because otherwise you float up out of the ground and you float down the streets of the bayou. Or whatever they have there in New Orleans twice. I can't stand it. And I'm like, have you ever thought about not letting your dead flow down the streets? I think it might be a cool way to live your lives. But I imagine that in in many southern states, it's like, well, you know what? We got to we got to bury you above ground. So I would assume that there's maybe a supply and demand issue where it's like you can only bury them in these mausoleums in these in these spaces. You can only bury them there. You got to raise those rents, you know, cemetery landlord. Yeah, I, mean, I know no, up no, here, no. like there's there's like a lot of like quote unquote famous cemeteries that are like haunted cemeteries, so that's why they're like famous, you know. And mm. I've like walked around 
scared myself, of course. Um, and then I see like the mausoleum, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. And then like there's actually there's one that's like on the outskirts of the city in one of the suburbs. And across the way, there's like where the church people get buried, like the church like higher ups get buried. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, they just have like, you know, some of the skeletal remains just like out and like in this big mausoleum for like all like the priests and the nuns and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh. <laughs> I'm like in <laughs> in Chicago land? Oh man. Hello? I mean, that sounds mm-hmm. like um what are they called? The like underneath Paris. Oh, oh the, the catacombs. catacombs. The catacombs. Yeah. That's like when you go down there. Those are real bones. Yeah. Down there. Like that's that that's a whole mm-hmm. person who had a name. His name was Chinchilla. Yeah. Chinchilla, Chinchilla came back. It's Philip, actually. Philip's yeah, back. Philip. Yeah. I want to. He was, he was reincarnated <laughs> as Philip the Lizard. So I don't know what he did in his previous life to really fuck it up, but that's what happens. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Might not want to know. Have you guys ever seen a As Above, So Below, the movie? Yeah. I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. So. Yeah, no. It's, it's about. Are you guys into horror movies at all? Yeah. Or suspense? So it's like a PO it's like a POV film, like like handheld camcorder, and it's about these people who go down into the crypts mm-hmm. in in Paris. And as you can imagine, like it's a scary movie. It's one of my favorite movies. It's mm-hmm. fantastic. I love that movie. But yeah, anyway, that was that's my transition away from uh, away from the crypts. <laughs> I didn't know what I was transitioning to. I'm practicing. I I have the before. Mm-hmm. I had the transition. I did I wasn't transitioning in you, the you, you must grade the transition grade the transition yeah. you know what i give it like a c minus for effort and for thinking okay. it really through you can get there though yeah. i've gotten That's a lot a of c minuses yeah. so yeah Harvard you're on your course. way it's okay i also teach uh college courses and i had to fail a student last year and they did no. not graduate um <laughs> she's literally the transition teacher <laughs> she's teaching she the america's youth how to transition <laughs> today's lesson was just the first half and you got to come back next week when we te- we talk about the second half. The second half. So somebody second drops half. out, all of a sudden, you know, like man, I, w- I got a C in first semester. It looks like I'm showing up for class next yeah, semester. Yeah, see, you're passing. Yeah. I mean, listen, you get a D minus, you're still passing. So. Oh. Is that what we're doing now? Wow. D- D's, oh fuck yeah. Degrees? Oh yeah. I mean, D's I. D's um, get degrees, bro. In my undergrad, I got like. <laughs> wow. I got like two D's. One in rhetorical criticism because we had to write a twenty plus page paper every two weeks. Um, on a 10 week some trimester. I did not sleep that a lot during that, that term. And then, um, of course, uh, math, but you know, what? I did it. you took a class called rhetorical criticism. Yes. Where were those classes when I was in school? I had, <laughs> oh I man. I, I mean, we I had, had a huge Calc three, like, mm. Oh no, no. We yeah. had a whole like speech program because I was on the debate team too. So my instructor was my debate coach. So whenever we had to like go away for the weekend, I'd be like, I'm so sorry I turned it in late. He wouldn't mark me off because I was literally with him in a room arguing to, like, a group of people <laughs> about, like, yeah, I don't know, like, um, what was the one? It was, like, I know we had, we did a lot around that time about, like, Iraq and shit like that, too. And I'm like, yeah, you saw me yelling, so please exempt me and do not take points off. And he never did. But only one kid in that class actually got, like, a B. Everyone else got Ds or failed. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I took easy classes and I got D's. To analyze. D's <laughs> get degrees. Get degrees. D's yeah. get degrees. Can I, okay, can I ask you a question? I've been like, I don't know how to transition into it. And I, I don't want to be rude. And no, it's okay. That's, not, that's, that's a good enough transition, transition, you know? Yeah. But yeah. I'd like to ask you a question. See? Perfect transition. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you get a C plus. That's it. I, um, <laughs> so I want to know, I want to ask, can we do a little round robin? Um, because I'm curious, people who in, you guys interview a lot of bands, and you guys talk about music, you have to be sort of up to date on this stuff. Did any of you guys have an album of the year? Doesn't have to be emo, doesn't have to be alternative. Did any, any of you guys have like an album that made you go like, holy shit, this year? No. I really liked... Maybe was that... No, I really liked the random EP that 100 Gex dropped. A lot of people did not like it. Um, but yeah, I know music this year. I, I mean, obviously we liked, we liked Action Adventures new album because there are homies mm-hmm. are really chill and it was like, it's a banging album. Yeah. They're from Chicago, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah they're super cool. We, we bullied Manny to come out to a show one night cause he was friends with the band and they told us about it. I'm like, Hey, where are you at? He's like, 
I kind of forgot. Oh, shit. Like, I'm like, so are you showing up? <laughs> he showed up. Yeah. Um, but I feel like last year there was a lot of stuff that came out, but I never like sat down intensely listened. I did really like the scene queen EP, though, which I know she's like controversial for some people. But I saw her when she came to Chicago, and not only is she a really good performer, but I do actually like that sound of music because it reminds me, because I really like Hollywood Undead, Dead, non-ironically, and it reminded me of like early Hollywood Undead, Dead, but from a female perspective. So my thing about Scene Queen has always been like, her music is solid, right? Doesn't yeah. have to be everybody's taste, but if you're gonna do music like that, you have to be able to bring it live. Mm -hmm. And so is this confirmation that she brings it live? She brings she it live. bring solid. it live, yeah. Okay, Hundo P, solid. she brings it live. Nice, okay, yeah. cool. It was a really, really great show. I mean, I will say because of the audience mix, you got a lot of people from TikTok who have never been to a show, and then you have a lot of people who are like, I go to like metalcore shows. I go to pop punk gigs, like let's. Nice go it's so all, you kind of had yeah. a little bit of a disconnect there but gotcha. no she, it was really fun and she really like went off on stage that's awesome she has a cool energy i like it I like mm -hmm. she yeah does. i'm looking up albums that were released in 2022 Brian's right now because i doing this the problem is like right i'll now. listen to something and go i did also really like the avril lavigne album i know it's like very bubblegum pop basically yeah for what it is but it was actually pretty solid when it dropped i listened to it straight through and i listened to it on repeat when i was working out of my office because it was just it was chill you knew what you were getting it's that same like avril lavigne energy from like um the best damn thing album which mm -hmm. was one of my favorite albums when i was like god probably like 12 years old when it came out and it, it had that same vibe and i thought it was pretty solid because i think it oh. covered our scene, but also married it to the mainstream too. She's dating Mod Son, right? Or are they yeah. married? Or, yeah. yeah, engaged, so, I think, yeah. Engaged. Okay, cool. So I would imagine he appears a couple times on that album, or at least once. I think, yeah, they have Burn For You that's on that album. And that Got was a it. single. And then I think she does have one. No, that was a re release that she did with MGK. They redid. Oh, no, that's Boys Lie. That's hers. Yeah. So they had that single together too. Gotcha. Yeah, this is me admitting I, I have not actually gone and listened to the new Avril EP as much or a new Avril um, album as much as I love Avril. So that's now on my to do list. Yeah. That's Early January. To that's the it. issue I come up to is like I just haven't listened to the new record, like the action record. And I'll say it right here and they can come for, come for me. I haven't listened to it yet. And I keep putting it on my list of like, I got to listen to that. Your address right now. At he least literally knows my address. <laughs> 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 that's, the, that's the problem of like and uh, telling bands that your address and then telling them you haven't listened to their music. It's like, okay, well, we'll see you soon. You know, I'm sending Brian, a team over. Old Addy. Oh, that's right. Good. I'll send them your new one. Don't worry. Got you. <laughs> Anyone wants worst. to roll up and fight Brian <laughs> on site for not listening to their albums? I have listened to Brave year. Weather. Okay. I have, I swear. <laughs> Please leave me and all of my belongings out of this. <laughs> Leave his little Gerard Way children. Alone. My tires. Uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think I listened to anything that was released this year because all the, like the 1975. Uh, I did, and and That's actually like the new Panic record I did listen to, but even the new yeah, 1975, exists. it exists. It's yeah. I think it's fine. I think it's good, but I'm not like putting it to the top of my list of like, like I don't want I don't want to say like oh I'm a huge fan of this as saying like this is my album of the year or anything just i've listened to so few anything this year that i'm like oh yeah i listened to that and i listened to this thing they're okay and i might listen to it again in the future but i guess i wasn't like blown away by anything that i did listen to that came out in 2022 i want to hold on i want to address real quick i'm just noticing your my chem mm -hmm. what are those dolls the funko pops Funko Pops, thank you. It was on the, yeah. on the tip of my tongue. So this is a good time also now to say that my chem, uh, I can't speak for anybody else, but was such a massive influence for me, just specifically the first three records. Um, their later stuff's good too. I'm not bashing it, love it. But like those first three records were so formative for me okay. in my youth that like, yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's another big influence while we're you know no longer talking about influences I'm sneaking in. <laughs> Hey, no, I mean, that's correct. I mean, they, I don't play, I don't know how to play any instruments or sing whatsoever, but they're an influence on me 
emotionally. As a person. As a person. Yeah. That band influenced me to become the person I am. Musically, I learned nothing. <laughs> My dad caught me um, back in the day walking around in the backyard trying, when I was first trying to learn how to sing, I might have been. 12, right? 12 or 13. I was trying to figure it out. And my dad has this video of me like angrily, like hunching around the backyard <laughs> trying to sing along to The Sharpest Lives. Yep. Oh by my Mike God. Now. And he should like this one of the, like when you're little, your parents, they love to embarrass you to you. And so when I come back in, he's just like standing there in the doorway and he's got the cool pics camera that he recorded me on. You just hear me going like, <laughs> and he's like, I thought you were trying to learn how to sing. What is this? Oh like, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The first feedback I ever got, because when I was trying to like, I was not, I was not good at singing a long time ago. It was very bad. And when I was a kid, I would sing in the other room and walk into the living room and I'd go, Hey guys, listen, I want to know. I don't want to like go do the John Mayer thing. Like I don't want to be a solo singer or anything, but am I good enough to like front me in a band? Do you think I could ever do that? And again, I'm like 12 or 13 at the time. And my mom and dad looked at me, and they are like the most supportive people. Don't get me wrong, I love them to death. But they looked at me, and with straight faces, they said, I think if that's something you want to do, you're going to need to keep practicing a lot. And that was the first time that I ever got like brutal feedback from my parents. And I consider that brutal because everything else was just glowing. Like I said, they're yeah. awesome. But, yeah, uh, I was about to say, like, <laughs> I feel like, like that's pretty like. <clears throat> honest yeah and like it could have yeah. been yeah. worse they could have been like hey yeah. you know what you suck and you need a lot of practice so at least yeah. i didn't do that yeah. well every other time i've ever asked something my parents have always i've been like hey am i is this a good drawing it wasn't they were like yeah that's so fantastic it's amazing you're so talented at everything because they were those parents but mm-hmm. the one time i asked like hey i want to do music what do you think they're like keep thinking kid. <laughs> think, think of something else that is still a very like good and positive way of doing that. Yeah, that's where, a better way to do yeah. it. There's, there's a lot of other ways they could have said. They did yeah, not. for sure. Because at least you for kept sure. with it, and here we are. You know, one I day you're going to be on that emo social pod. You know, <laughs> yeah. I always wonder so like how many people towards. have like lied to me about how I was doing good when I wasn't. Like you need that though to get good mm-hmm. because you need the confidence to like you know get you there eventually. But like, how many people actually were like? Yeah, that's great. And then they're just like, that's fucking terrible. <laughs> and this yeah. is why music criticism exists. Not everything is always great. Yeah. Look, that's fair. My mom would come out to shows and she'd be like, well, it was really loud. And I was like, that's <laughs> that's nothing. I can't do anything with that. Yes. You're like, she's not wrong. That is a fact. It was loud. Just yeah. tells me nothing. Gives me no information. Yeah. Tells me this was the place you were at. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I got nothing. Maybe uh, it was a sound guy. You know, it was just fucking loud. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't hear yeah. anything. We'll never work with that sound guy again now. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, exactly. Look what yeah, you've thanks, done. Mom, I appreciate it. You, you <laughs> really told it to us. Right away. Yeah. <laughs> Ruined careers. Um, Maria, I want to hear if you had a, an album of 2022, uh, and then we'll we'll go into some plugs and just say, like, where people can find you, and uh, then we'll hang out on Twitch and all that. So what was your album of 2022? You know, I only listened to the same like two songs for the entire year. So, uh, but one album I did actually play through the entire time. Looks like it was uh, the new Spirit Box album. Mm. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. That was that was it for me. That works. I mean, what were the other two songs you kept playing though? Mm. Uh, so I really like Lights. I don't know if you know oh, yeah. Lights. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was also another album I liked this year. Um, so probably something off of that. And I really like Wallows. Yep. So, oh, Wallows is so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good. But those are like the three bands I literally listened to the entire year. Nothing else. Yep. <laughs> I get very like that where it's like I'm listening to the same two albums or the same two bands just on repeat for like months. And then it's like, okay, did it. Cut it. Moving on to something yeah. else. <laughs> it's like Check a challenge. Out. Like, yeah. how long will it take me to get really fucking tired of this? Yep. I'm still going. Still yeah, on it. Shit. At a certain point, I was listening to so much Hundred Gex that I was like, "Wow, they may be my top artists." And then um, Fall Out Boy as a whole are like my comfort band, but also like mm-hmm. one of my favorite bands too. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but Take Us to Your Grave is my comfort album. So anytime mm-hmm. that I'm like in a perpetual state of anxiety or panic, I put on Take This to Your Grave. <laughs> 
<laughs> and listen to it in full. And the latter half of the, the past year, it was like, that was just it. I'm like, back on top. Yep. <laughs> 0.5% listeners again on Spotify. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <sighs> That's awesome. Is, is 100 Gex, um, are they, I should probably know this. Are they like hyper pop? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They're like okay. kind of the hyper pop band right now now that charlie xcx doesn't do as much hyper pop anymore after she said it's dead oh it's not yeah. i mean yeah. 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 dropped their ep that. and they're probably gonna drop like a full album of just and pure chaos Ten thousand right gex there. yeah ten thousand gex is the name 10, 000, of yeah. <laughs> 10, <000. laughs> they just keep bumping it yeah one million gex so good yes. how, are we name how many gex are too many yeah <laughs> how are we gonna name all these gex there's only oh so many God. times you can rhyme with philip like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> last album <laughs> infinite gex <laughs> <laughs> that's actually their last album ever like there's no more gex we can put in here it's yeah. infinite you can't you have to yeah, retire too many gex yeah should write a prequel record called one gek one gek <laughs> Ten gek. <laughs> oh, I was, I was, the reason I asked about a hundred gecks being uh, hyper pop is I finally had someone, an artist, break me into hyper pop recently. Hell yeah! And it was Breakins. Yep, I listen yeah, to Breakins. Brian loves Breakins. I do love Breakins. Yes. Uh, the new Breakins record it just like is something else. Yeah, he is becoming like artist, like artist favorite artist. Like it's becoming like. I'm really into music. It's like, oh shit, this is like really inspiring and really good. Um, I saw him live like before it was even released, and I was like, wow, these songs are really good and interesting. And this kid is like 15. He's not, but he's yeah. a child. Yeah, he's like 21. He's, yeah. yeah, he's like a little kid. Yeah. And you listen to that, whether you're a musician or like as a musician, you listen to that and you're like, the production decisions that are made there, you're like, you get angry. Yeah. You get angry because you're like, I could have never thought. I thought I was decent, and I could have never thought of that. Like it is, and it's good. Yeah. And it's it's so good. Yeah. So that that might be that, or because nobody asked me. Sorry, I'm, I'm jumping in here. <laughs> that hypochondriac by Breakins, mm -hmm. or there's another band that's like, if you put Chevelle and My Chemical Romance and Under Oath in a blender, they're called Static Dress out of the UK. Yes. Yeah, we've heard of Static and Dress. Yeah. They yes. released. Yeah, Rouge Carpet Disaster is such a fantastic record. So those I are really I want the ultimate UK tour to be Static Dress, Holding Absence, and Creeper. And I want I want it here though. I want it here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, I, I, I like I hurt myself earlier this year when I um, it was Loathe was touring. Yep. Yeah. And they they had Static Dress opening for them, and they had two Florida dates. They had Orlando and Tampa, and obviously we're here in Orlando. And I couldn't make either date because I had finals for school. <gasps> Dude. And it just like could you have gotten a D if you bailed on it though? Yeah, like think no, about it. No, they were like they were like class where it's like if, if I didn't show up and just like throw my whole self into this final, I'm not going on to the next semester. Yeah, because I'm not very good at finance classes. That's fair. Okay, and that's yeah, that's the, they would be like. Do you think this is a good financial decision? Yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's it's a it's a thirteen dollar <laughs> ticket. What do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> be like, but for your education, I'm about to like, have the time of my life for yeah. thirteen dollars. <laughs> Now I will I will admit I did have a student one time they like emailed me at like three in the morning and of course I'm up and they're like oh, I'm not gonna be in class um, this morning at eight in the morning and I'm like okay it's Wednesday <laughs> I want to read so I'm like reading with the excuses she's like I went to a concert at like United Center it was just so loud and I have a really bad headache and I'm like sure Jan. You're fine, but you still have to have the homework due, so send it in. <laughs> You're <a> Jan. <laughs> uh, did, they know, did they know you host a music podcast? Um, they had. I think some of them have like a brief idea because we have. Um, that was for. The, I was doing like a basic like media one on one type of class, so we talked about like the music industry and podcasting. So I was like, oh, I work in the music industry by doing this, this, and this. And I'm like, so I'm always at like concerts or shows or something. So, and I have canceled class. I, I canceled class early because I was trying to get Olivia Rodrigo tickets and I did not get it. And I was so upset. <laughs> I was like, guys, She's get someone the fuck else. out of here. She's <laughs> someone else from the pop world where like when you listen to her writing, you're just like, this is, there's so much here. It's mm -hmm. so good. Like, she's fantastic. Uh, well, speaking of fantastic. Where can people find your oh. band on the internet? I did it. I got one in. I got one in. Brian, that's like a B minus. <laughs> I'll take it. 
Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, give us the plugs. So, yeah, you can. I think the easiest way to find us is on our Instagram. Uh, it's it's at Brave Weather, right? Yeah. No FL. Okay, so it's just at Brave Weather, and then um, in our bio, there's like a link tree, and you can click on that, and it just has like everything that we've done so far, and where you can buy merch and all that stuff. Yeah, we're lucky enough uh, in most places to have been able to grab like the handle Brave Weather. So um, on TikTok and on Instagram, we're Brave Weather. Uh, and then on Spotify, guess what? Brave Weather. Oh, yeah. And then on Twitter and Facebook, if you guys use Twitter or Facebook, it's mm. Brave Weather FL. Yeah. For Florida. For Florida. For Florida. Yeah, for the swamp. For the swamp. <laughs> Gate swamp was, for a Brave weather swamp was taken. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that'd be, that'd be awesome. Uh, and then everybody should check out the uh, the EP that was just released. Stay here and listen to that. Rock that. And you know, you'll probably have new music soon. But like, you're going to record it, so who knows? Yeah. Then whenever that drops, yeah, they'll have to play it on repeat. Yeah. And Harry Styles is coming through to do a, a little. Oh man. Oh. Brian, you- <laughs> Oh, wow. I can't believe wow. we would say such a thing. Is this live? Can you, can you cut this? Yeah, I'm going to cut this out of the it's gonna be bleep. live it's gonna be internet. Ser- Sari Hiles, they have a similar... Yeah, 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 yeah. Not the There's going to be an artist named Sari Hiles who's like, like dude. <laughs> it's like Michael Sarah Palin, all right? Mm-hmm. Don't worry about Michael it. Sarah Palin. Yeah, that's, like that's Calm Trues. Like, no, that doesn't work. Apparently a thing. Oh, no. That's okay. probably... Some, you're, you just gave someone an idea. That right? is a thing. That is a band, Lizzie. I think oh, it, yeah, already? It's okay, oh, yeah, it's a band. Well, there's, there's a uh, San Holo. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Who is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're not bad. It's just like, dude, that's somebody else's name, kind of, sort of, but not really. But it goes. You can be a good musician. You just need... You know, we we, we have a list of, of ideas here. It shouldn't be that hard to come up with good ideas on your own. Uh, cemetery okay. landlords is taken, so don't use that. Yeah. You can don't. use skeleton yeah. homies, probably. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somehow I feel like you can't. I feel like that is used. <laughs> then they're probably great. Um, well, yeah, uh, we are gonna. Uh, if you guys have a little bit, we'll hang out over on Twitch and just uh, just chill for a little bit. And um, yeah, uh, if if that's cool. And otherwise, um, uh, everybody go check out Brave Weather. They're uh, they're in Florida. And uh, don't let your lizard. If if your lizards are cold, then bring them in. Yeah, don't leave them out in the do not leave them out weather <laughs> in Florida. Yeah. If you're cold, so are your lizards. Yeah. <laughs> Never forget Philip Riff. Yo, this episode All dedicated right. to Philip. <laughs> um, long live Philip. Long live Philip. Uh, okay, well we'll go hang out over on Twitch. But uh, 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 Christian Maria, brave weather. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so Thank much you. for having us.